today we're going to make a solitaire ring with a faceted stone. This is really going to be a fun one. Let's make some jewelry. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the show. I am the rap maker, Jim McIntosh. I'm going to be showing you how to make a really, really creative piece of jewelry, and that is a solitaire ring with a faceted stone. Yes, I said a faceted stone. I've gotten asked so many times, can you make projects with fascinate, fascin fascinated stones? With faceted stones. And I've come up with a couple of different ways of doing it. This ring is a really cool ring. Now, we're going to take our time when we create this. We're not going to be in a rush. We're going to do it slowly. Remember, this is art, okay? This is supposed to be fun. So don't get frustrated. Don't get angry. It looks complicated, but trust me. And this is an easy ring to make. And you're going to make a bunch of these after you get this first one done, all right? So let's take a look at the tools and the materials. Before we get to the tools and the materials, I want to remind you that you can still pick up a copy of my new book, Wire Wrapping, Simple Techniques for Beautiful Designs. No matter if you're a new uh, artist or if you've been creating wire wrap jewelry for years, this is a great book. If you're new, this shows you the simple ways of making things. And if you've been doing this for a while, this has some great tips and some tricks to make creating wire wrap jewelry faster and easier. So make sure you pick up a copy of it. You can get it both in a print copy like this one, and it's also available as an ebook. So check out the link below and get your copy, all right? Here's all the tools we're going to need for this project. Now, we're going to need something to measure uh, our wire. So if we've got uh, just a, a measuring device here, ruler. We're also going to need something to cut the wire off with, and that's what we're going to use these for. Uh, wire cutters, these are flush cutters, really good pair of flush cutters. We're also going to use the wire wrapper's best friend, and that is painter's tape. This is going to hold everything together for us. It's going to allow us to, to make, make things easier as we're wrapping, is, is what this really does a good job at. And I always like to use a pair of scissors to, to cut the tape off with. Uh, I'm really weird about, as you guys know, I'm really strange about my, my tape, so I like to cut it off with that. Now, we are making a ring. And I like to use these uh, wrap and tap pliers, or tap and wrap, wrap and tap, tap and wrap, wrap and tap. I don't remember which one it is, but it's one of those two. Um, but I like to use these to make the initial shape of the ring shank. It just makes it easier to, to pull it around and to get it into shape. And then we're going to use a ring mandrel to get the exact size that we need. I'm using a steel ring mandrel because we can also... Uh, hammer the ring shank uh, flat uh, if need be. I, I do like to kind of do that, and we'll show you that how to do that as we go. But a uh, good steel ring mandrel is really good. Uh, we're also going to, of course, we're going to be wire wrapping, so we'll need our uh, wrap maker pliers. Make sure you have a pair of these. This makes everything so much easier to do, so you definitely need some of these. Now, also, since we are shaping things, uh, we also need a rawhide mallet. We may or may not need this, but this is just helps me get a tighter fit around the ring mandrel uh, as we're, we're creating a piece. So this uh, hammers things uh, and, and makes them a little harder without leaving any marks on the wire. So that's, that's the important thing. We don't want to leave any marks that we don't want on there. And we're also going to use uh, our uh, chasing hammer, uh, we're going to maybe use this to the, the wide side in order to, to flatten everything out. So that's pretty much all we're going to need for this project. Let's now take a look at the materials we're going to need for this. These are all the materials we're going to need for this particular project. The ring is going to be made up of 16 gauge dead soft round wire. You heard me say it. We're using round wire. You know, I rarely use round wire, but let me tell you, when I'm making rings, for some reason, rings always work out 
much better with round wire. Uh, not all rings, but the particular ring we're going to be making today, it looks better, it fits better, it's a better feel on the hand. So I like to use round wire for the main part of the ring, okay? So trust me, there's a madness to my method. So just follow along, people. And we're using sterling silver as well. This is something I, I don't use a lot, but I particularly enjoy working with sterling. Um, I'll let you in on just a little bit of hit. If you're a little hit here, if you're selling your work, you want your customers to have a perceived value. It's important that you are able to tell them this is made from sterling silver because it adds more value to your piece. You can charge a better price for that piece. You can make more money selling that piece. So I always say use either copper or sterling for a lot of your work. It doesn't mean that all of your work has to be made out of those things. You can use craft wire. You can use other types of metals and things. But if you're selling and you want to get the best bang for your buck, use a better quality wire like copper or sterling silver. Okay, even sterling silver filled will work as well. So think about those things as you're making your work. So that's the main wire we're going to have is the 16 gauge round wire. We're also going to need two different types of wrap wire. We're going to use uh, 22, 21 gauge half round wire uh, to, to wrap the area underneath the stone. And we want a finer wire with that. And we, we're going to use 18 gauge half round wire. This is all, both of these are dead soft for the ring shank. We're gonna wrap the ring shank a little bit. And this uh, gives you a little bit better coverage, a little firm coverage, and it, um, it will definitely uh, be more comfortable because it's a little wider and, and won't uh, kind of pinch inside of your finger. And of course, the last thing we'll need is this little guy here. Now this is a CZ, but this is a 10 millimeter round uh, stone. Uh, it's a cubic zirconia. Uh, use whatever type of stone you want. But this 10 millimeter will work perfectly for the stone that we're going to be, for the ring we're going to be making. All right, well, that's it. That's everything we need. Let's go ahead and we'll get started making the piece. The first thing we need to do is we need to cut our main wire. And what we're using is this 16 gauge round wire. And we're going to need eight inches of this. So I'm gonna measure that out. And we're gonna cut this. This is all of the frame wire that we're going to need for this particular piece is this eight inches. And just take a minute and straighten it out as best you can. Uh, it doesn't have to be perfectly straight. We just need a relatively straight wire. And so let's, there. The next thing we wanna do is we wanna find the center of this. So we said that this was eight inches. Now one of the, pro one of the things I neglected to say is you also need a fine tip permanent marker. I usually remind you guys that you need one, but. Uh, I forgot in this case, so make sure you get you a fine tip permanent marker. And I'm just going to find the center of my wire. So we cut an eight inch piece of wire. So there we are at four inches. That's just kind of a guide to remind us where the center of the piece, where the center of the wire is, just to make things a little easier, a little central, a little balanced is a good word. So now we know where the center is. We're going to use our wrap and tap pliers. Now there's, this has three different barrels on it. It's got a, a 13 millimeter, a 16 millimeter, and a 20 millimeter. I'm gonna be making about a size six uh, ring. So I'm gonna use this middle barrel. And all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna center it, take that mark we just made, I'm gonna center it right here on that middle one. I'm just gonna bring both ends around you can do these one at a time, but I want to make sure I have a nice snug fit. So I brought them around that middle barrel. And that's what's great about these pliers is this thing helps. So this side right here, this uh, plastic or rubber or silicone side of it, it holds it in place so that it doesn't slide out of place. So it's, it's a really a nice tool to have. So I can bring this and kind of get snug around that barrel. And we can remove that, those aside. 
This is just a general size. To get our finished size, I'm going to put it on my ring macro. And I'm just going to size it up. See, that's already too big. There's size six. So what we need to do is just need to kind of squeeze the sides a little bit. And then we can put it back on here. And we can go up to a size six. Now, I don't want to make this exactly a size six. Here's why. As you're working with it, the, the ring the shank will move a little bit. It'll widen. It'll shrink. Uh, we're also going to be wrapping the shank a little bit. That's going to take up some room. So you're going to want to make it a little bit larger than the finished size. So I'm going to go up to a size six and about a size six and a quarter. So I'm just going to move it up just a little bit to a six and a quarter. There. And if you make it a little bit too large, I'm going to show you how you can fix that as well. But to make it so it, it fits the right size. So there we have our ring. It's round, just how we want it. Now, we've got these two sides, they're crossed over, and we want to start making the setting. So I'm going to use my wrap makers, and I'm going to, where they cross over, right here about this center area where they cross over, I'm going to put my wrap makers, and I want to bend these out 90 degrees away from the bottom of the shank. So you want to kind of find the center. So kind of look around for the middle of this and bend it outward, just like that. And we're going to do the same thing with this other side. We want to get these so that they, they're sitting side by side so we can start making the, the piece. So here, so here's our ring shank. Got both of these sides pulled away. Now, take just a minute. Remember, we're using dead soft wire. So take a minute and make sure that these are centered how you want them, that this is, is round, that it's they're both even and coming out from away from the ring shank, just like that. And we want to tape these together so that it makes them easier to work with. So remember, this is heavier wire. So it kind of is a little stiffer. It works a little harder. And and trust me, if you're using 16 gauge hard wire or half hard wire, this is going to be hard. This is really, really going to be hard to, to maneuver some of this stuff around. That's why I'm saying dead soft wire. It is a little stiffer, but it still moves very easily in your fingers. So let's cut a couple of flags. Now, for this particular piece, I'm going to cut four flags, four pieces of this tape. And if I can find the end, there we go. And let's get our scissors out. I'll cut four of these. I always like cut them and I like to stick them to my work surface. There's one, two, here's three. I'm gonna cut one more. Here is number four. So take one of these little tape flags and I want you to go towards the end. I'm going to put this about a half inch away from the end of the, uh, of my wire ends here. And I'm going to take a minute also and just kind of make sure these are side by side there. I'm going to show you a technique that I came up with. It's called wire smithing. It's a really simple technique, but basically what it is, is you use a flat file and you file away a little bit of the metal so that the wire, your wrap wire, can sit down in it. And this prevents everything from doing this, from moving back and forth. Uh, if the setting is to starts moving back and forth, it's going to weaken the setting. The stone could pop out of it. You lose the stone, now you're upset, okay? Wire smithing, a very, very simple technique to do. And all it takes is one extra piece, or one, piece, one tool. And that is this little guy here. Now, I usually, for bigger pieces, if I'm filing more away, I usually use a, a small six inch, eight inch hand file, flat hand file. Today, because we're only gonna be cutting about a three millimeter wide area, 
going to be using a flat, um, th this is a needle file, it's also called a jeweler's file, either one. It's a flat one, it's got a serrated edge on all four sides. That's going to cut just a little bit of metal away so that it gives it a firm area for the uh, wrap wire to sit. All right, so let's do that now. And I did neglect to tell you guys you needed one of these. I apologize for that. I just now remembered after we had gotten way into filming that I forgot to, to talk about this uh, needle file. So pick you up a needle file flat, or you can even use a square needle file as well, as long as it's not wider than three millimeters, because that's all we're going to be cutting away. So let's measure and mark that out on here. So I'm going to measure three millimeters from where these come together, where our wires come together. I'm going to measure three millimeters. Let's get this kind of set up here. And we're going to say one, two, and three is right there. Okay, I just made that mark at three millimeters. And now I'm going to use my needle file. I'm going to use this, the thin side of it. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to cut some of this away. You don't need to cut very much of this away. You only want to cut approximately a half a millimeter off of here, but just take your time and make this rough area. And look at me, I'm just tearing up my work surface too. So be careful of that as well, uh, is cutting up your work surface. I'm gonna hold it up here just a little bit. And I'm just going to make just these nice, even file through it. So that should be, kind of look at it from the side. Turn it around also and just give it a couple of passes on the other side just to make sure that it's level. There, this is going to be our cut and wrap area. Okay, that, sh that should be good. I just got maybe just a little bit of taken away. And now we're going to use our, our 21 gauge half round wrap wire. And I'm going to cut just a small piece. You don't need a lot of this. I'm gonna use maybe about six inches of this. And you can tell this is sterling silver because it's tarnished. Sterling tarnishes rather quickly. Cleans up really well, but it does tarnish a bit. So there's our wrap wire. Now I'm going to hold the area I want to wrap, I'm just going to be going just outside of that wrap area right here. And I'm going to take my wrap wire and I'm going to insert it into my wrap makers till it bottoms out. Then I'm going to add just a little extra pressure. Then I'm going to start my wrap. So I'm only going to make probably about three wraps. Kind of bring that back down just a little bit. Two, and there's number three. So all I did was three wraps on here I'm going to and I'm not going to cut this because we're going to add some more wire to this I'm thinking that, you know, I only did two that are showing let's do one more there we go there's there's our third wrap make sure it's in that little channel that we just cut and then just squeeze it down we're gonna set this wire just a little bit just to make sure it's in there that's all we've done now this little beginning tail that we used, I want you to take, and we're going to kind of push it into the center. And I want to kind of push this in between the two halves here. And uh, just take your wrap makers and kind of maneuver that in there. I kind of grab it and I kind of pull so that it kind of gets trapped in there. And then we can trim that off. And I want to try and trim it so it's in, the center of this as best as possible. This takes just a little bit of doing, make sure you're only getting the wrap wire and then kind of maneuver him back in. So that way it's out of the way and it's not gonna cut anybody. Check to make sure it's not scratching. So now you can take your flag off. And let me just point one other thing out. If as you're, you're filing this, you have a problem with everything moving, that's not, not uh, 
firm, uh, and easy for you to do. You can put a piece of tape right here, just outside of that cut and wrap area that you marked, just right outside of there, and that will uh, make the area firm so that you can uh, go ahead and um, so you can go ahead and and cut into that. Okay, just a tip. The next thing we need to do is we need to start making the basket where the stone is going to sit. Call it a basket because that's kind of what it looks like. So take your wrap makers and just above that area that you cut, I want you to bend everything outward about 90 degrees. Just bend it outward. I should have left that tape on. You know what? I'm going to put that tape back on. This does make it a little easier. So let's tape that guy back up. There. Just keep just so it keeps everything in, right, in, right where it needs to be. Nothing's going to get out of place. The next thing we want to do is we want to get our another tool that I forgot to tell you about. What is what is with what is with me today, guys? I don't understand why I can't remember all of the tools that I used for this. I know it's a lot of tools. This tool I forgot, you can either use brown nose pliers, which you probably have. The ones I really like to use for this is I like to use bail making pliers, those six step bail making pliers. So let me grab those right quick and I'll show you how to do this next part. Got them right here. I knew I forgot something. These six step pliers, you can get a pair of these uh, on my website. There's a link below on how to get all the tools and the materials you need. But I did forget. These. I really like these because they do uh, make it easier to form these loops, and especially on this project. Now, remember our stone? I said we got a 10 millimeter round stone. This next part, we want to make a loop for that basket that's about two millimeters smaller than our stone. So if you're using a 12 millimeter stone, let's say, you want to make it a little bit smaller down to 10. I'm using a 10 millimeter faceted stone for this. So I want to make it just a little bit smaller. So I'm going to make it about eight millimeters. And one of these is about that size. I'm going to use this large one and we can always make it a little bit smaller. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to set that barrel right here. And I'm going to take the, the two wires. I'm going to bend them up and over that large barrel here, this large barrel on this piece, and that gives me a nice wide um, loop here. Now let's check the loop for size. This is probably going to be slightly larger. Yeah, this is a much larger loop. So let's continue to just shape this. We'll move this out of the way and we'll just, it's better to make one a little bit too big than too small because it's just easier to maneuver this. But we just want to kind of take our wrap makers and make that loop just a little bit smaller. Just a little bit. And then we'll check it again. If we're looking for 8 millimeters wide. If we're at about 10 now. We were at about 12, but now we're at about 10. So let's keep pushing this down and around until we get 8 millimeters. Okay. Let's see what we got. I think that's going to be about, about what we want. That's going to be about eight millimeters. Yeah, that's eight millimeters. Notice it's it's got this hook to it right here. We want to take that hook out. So where, where this wire here intersects, everything below that we want flat up against that wrap. And this top part we want round. So I always grab it just above the area that I want to, to curve where I want to flatten it. And I'm just going to make that circle complete. I'm just going to bend it in. So now we've got a, a completed loop. So now that we've got this loop here made, we've got our wires, it's a closed loop. We want to go ahead and cut a little area right here that's about three millimeters wide. Now you can mark this out if you want. I'm just going to kind of eyeball it a little bit here. I'm just going to kind of hold it and just start right below that loop and just cut just a nice little area here that matches that first 
cut and wrap area that we've already cut and already wrapped. This Delana, make sure we, and this is just going to give us that nice little area for the wire to sit in. Just a little bit more. You want to make sure it's kind of flat. I'm doing this above in my work surface because I want to put more marks in my work surface. Now, once you're, you get a nice groove cut, take this wire that we didn't cut, and I want you to make some wraps. We're going to go from the loop towards the ring shank. So let me make three more wraps. So that's one, that's two, that's two. And then here is number three. And once you get that, go ahead and take your wrap makers and set that wrap on all kind of all four sides. There. So here's what you've got. So now you can take this piece of tape off. But we've got a loop that's nice and secure now. It's not going to get out, go out of the way or get get move or anything. It's pretty secure too. So you can take it both sides and you should be able to kind of move it and it won't rock back and forth. So open up the two wires that are hanging down. Bring them out so that they are flat. And then take the end of this wrap wire and feed it in. We're going to oops, feed it into the middle of the shank. And we want to kind of hide this one in the center of those two, of that uh, of these two right here. So I'm just going to do what we did previously. I'm going to move those to the center and I'm going to clip it. Now I'm using sterling. This is sterling silver. Sterling silver can be recycled. You can send it uh, into various places. They will melt it down for you. They will pay you uh, a certain amount per ounce of of your wire. So if you are using sterling silver, hold on to your sterling. Um, now I'm going to want to make sure that that cut end is up and in that center. And let's get cut just a little bit extra wire there. Now, now to start the start to make this setting. So we're going to separate these two sides. So just bring it out just a little bit. Bring these two sides. You want them evenly spread apart. So just make sure that both of them, and you want to do kind of a less of a spread than more of a spread, because what we're going to do is we're going to check this to see if our stone will fit. So open this up so that our stone will fit in there. Now, you'll notice the thing about a faceted stone is, is that there's some flat spots on here, on this stone. And that's what we want to kind of conform to, are some of these flatter areas. So I always take my wrap makers, and instead of having loops right here, I want to flatten these, the tops of these loops. So I just put my wrap makers in, and I just give them a squeeze to flatten this looped area just a little bit. See, so notice I'm just kind of making a flat area with my wrap makers. See, so look, I've gone, gone from this, this rounded area, to this flattened area. And you want it to be kind of even, so make sure that you get it and just work a little bit at a time. That's not, and then do the same thing with the other side. You want to flatten that loop. You want both sides to be the same. So you know, it takes a little bit of doing, but take your time and kind of flatten both sides out so that they are about even. You can just kind of look at them from the side and see if you've got them flattened how you want. Okay, this side needs to be flattened just a little bit more. Oops, this one does. I'm just taking my time. I just want these about as close to identical as we can. And then you can put your stone back in, check it, 
to make sure. Now notice it. Now it's going to sit a little better inside of there. And we'll fix all of this up. It's not completely done yet, but just wanted to, to kind of dry fit our stone a little bit because I've got these two sides are kind of wonky a little bit. We're going to final set this here in a little bit, but and I'll show you how to do that. Now, what are we going to do with these wires? We are going to incorporate them into the, the uh, ring shank. So put the ring back on your ring mandrel. And I want you to bend these wires. I made these just a little bit large here. Remember I said six and a quarter is what I made. So I'm going to bend these around at six and a quarter. For it. Just like that. See, so now they, I set this aside. So I've got my ring shank. It's kind of a double ring shank. And I've got the wires crossed over here. What I want to do is just slightly, slightly off center, not exactly in the center, but slightly off center. I want to cut these wires. So I'm going to cut this one. Actually, I've got these facing the wrong way, but I want to cut this one here. And then I want to cut the other one just across from that. I just shot myself with my own wire end. So notice now they're parallel with one another. And that's what we want to do. Now double check to make sure that they the fitting is right. One of these is not fitting correctly. I think it's this one I just cut. I want it to take just a tiny bit off. Remember what I always say, you can always cut more but cannot add wire. All right. See, so now when I push those two wire ends together, notice it makes one completed end. Now, we want to wrap this bottom area right in here. Uh, and we want to make sure that we cover that gap. So to make things so much more easier, we're going to grab another tape flag. And we're going to tape the ring shank together so we can work on it. And so put one in here and tape the ring shank together. Kind of, kind of high up on the ring. We're going to do the same thing on the other side. Grab another flag here. I'm going to do that up here. Now, we will also want to kind of trim these, these flags down just a little bit. We don't need a huge, a huge flag like this, but we just want to be able to hold these two sides together so that we can work on them as we are wrapping. So, we we'll kind of reform this bend a little bit, make sure everything's parallel with one another before we start wrapping. And then you can just kind of trim these flags down just so they don't get in the way. So I trim them down just a little bit away, see, just so we can get in here and do a little bit of wire wrapping and nothing is in our way. Make sure you've got everything pulled in tight. I want to kind of make sure these are parallel really well. There we go. So the next thing we want to do is we want to wrap this shank part, this bottom area. We don't want a very wide one. I'm, I'm only going to probably wrap about this much of it. And we want to make sure we span that little gap that we created, this little cut here. So what we'll do is I'm going to set my wrap makers right about here. I'm going to take my wrap wire, let's see. Yeah, and what we can do is as we're wrapping this, we can kind of move it into place before we set it. So I'm going to put my wrap makers, my uh, wire into my wrap makers. I'm gonna... <laughs> All right. I'm going to put my wire into my wrap makers till they bottom out. Add that little extra pressure, and then we're going to feed it in. Now, we're going to do this kind of slowly. So I'm just going to kind of push that into the center, and then I'm going to grab it and pull it back out and around. I'm going to then do the same thing. I'm going to put it into the center, pull it down. I'm going to 
bring it back up. This is kind of like sewing. We're going into it and then around. Make sure you're going next to one another. And as you're doing this, just kind of there. So what we want to do now is we want to figure out where it is we want to start this. And I think I'm pretty close to where I want to be. See, I want to do just this bottom area right here. So I think I'm right where I want to be. So I want to take this starting point and I want to feed that into the center as well and just put the starting side of it on the inside of the ring shank. So we're in there, pull that tight, and then I'm going to set it in place with my rat maker pliers there. Bring everything back together. And then we're going to continue to wrap and we're going to slowly do this. So take your time. This isn't a race because when you get to the gap area, you're going to want to span that gap. So almost there, almost to that, that gap area. And I'm going to hold the two sides together so that Make sure that they're across from each other also. But I'm going to hold it together. And then I'm going to continue the wrap. So put it in. Pull. Make sure it's nice where I want it. I'm going to continue to bring it around. Actually, before I do that, I want to kind of bend it in. Because I'm noticing it's coming just a little bit loose. So I want to... It's kind of go down there. Notice it, it's it's kind of springing out. I want to kind of bring it back together, just like that. And then I'm going to hold it, and then I'm going to span the gap and bring it in to the center again. Continue pushing it around. Like I say, just take your time. This all works out if you just take it a little bit at a time. Remember, this is art. This is not uh, this is supposed to be fun. And if you get frustrated doing it, it's not going to be fun. Like, I'm getting ready to get frustrated because these two wires just decided they wanted to cross over. There we go. All right. And we're just going to keep going. Rain around. See, so I spanned that gap. I want to hold that gap together. So I'm going to keep going. Look at that. Pushing in around. So now we're on the other side of that gap. We're going to want to kind of look and see, make sure this is centered. And this, this might be the last wrap I need to do right here. Last wrap I need to do. I want to finish this on the inside. We're going to trim both those wires. I probably could have trimmed that other side a few minutes ago, but we're just going to... And, and if it comes off center, like let's say I'm not centered. I think I'm pretty close to center. Let me see here. Yeah, that's pretty close. But if you needed to, you could make another wrap or two if you kind of got one too many wraps over here. You wanted to put another one over there. But these, it looks like I've got it centered. So I'm going to trim off this extra wrap wire here on the inside. Remember, I'm holding on to my excess wire. Do the same thing over here. We're going to trim that guy short. There, and I'm going to push it down. I want to make sure I set this really, really well. So make sure the whole wrap is set, bent into shape where we want it. I'm going to reshape this just a little bit here in just a minute. So now you should be able to take your tape off and the ring should hold together. So I just use my wrap makers and I just grab my tape, pull it all off, do this. pull it all off. Is this same thing here. Oh. There, look at that. 
Put it where your mouth. That's the great thing about this tape. It's sticky, but man, you end up with it all over you. Like, there we go. So here's what we've got. Just got this nice little ring. I do see one problem. I did not trim this in the center. This one wire that would scratch somebody big time. So I'm going to trim that just a little bit more. We'll reset it. And we're going to do now one more thing to set this in just a second so that it is really, really set well. We're going to put it back on our ring handle. This is when we want to kind of check it for size. So look at that. So now I am right on a size six, right on it. So I'm going to take my rawhide mallet and I'm just going to tap that wrap that we just made. And I want to shape this just a little bit. Make sure I got a good snug fit. Make sure it's rounded. And we should have a nice size six. The last thing we want to do is we want to set our stone. Now, setting the stone is kind of interesting because what we've kind of created here is like a snap fitting. So just look at your setting for shape. Make sure you've got it shaped properly. Where's my hat maker? See, there. So we're going to just make sure the sides are, are even and shaped the same. This is kind of wonky here, so I want to kind of fix it just a little bit. It looks like looks like I got it. Spread these out just a little bit. Now you want to be able to take this this, this and put it right over the stone. So I've got the the bottom tip of the stone facing up. The, the top of it or the, it's facing down. And I'm just going to snap this into place. So I'm just going to put it over it. I'm just going to push down. Boom! Snap right into place. And just make sure that it's it's on there correctly. But look at that. So we've got this nice little piece here. And it's got the sides just a little bit weird. They were uneven. They were so uneven that I pushed the stone right back out. Let's push to put our stone back in. So I want to bring those in again. Let's try this one more time. Here we go. One, two, and three. And... The stone should be level inside of here, so we can just kind of make an adjustment there. So that is our finished piece. It's just a nice, simple little piece. I got just that, just a little bit. Now to adjust it, just take your rat makers and put it at the bottom and squeeze, squeeze just the bottom of that basket setting, and that'll bring your wires back in. See, so that's, that's what we've ended up with. Wasn't that a fun little piece to make? Working with faceted stones is so much fun because of their beautiful, very elegant pieces. Uh, also, working with sterling is really kind of fun, too, uh, because it really makes a nice, beautiful piece uh, that, that people are going to really like. That's the one good thing. You could tell people, oh, it's sterling silver, and they will really appreciate the piece and I want to pay for it as well. And that's a really good thing. So I'm glad you came by. I hope you enjoyed the project. Uh, let me know what you make. Uh, go ahead and send me an email. You can contact me on my website, theratmaker.com. You can go over there and send me an email. Share, show, show me a picture of some of the work that you've done. I would really, really like to see it. I always love seeing what my students do. Well, I'm the Rat Maker, Jim McIntosh. Thank you so much for stopping by. And again, people ask me, how do you make beautiful jewelry? And I tell them the same thing every single time. Practice, practice, practice. We'll see you.